Hey everybody, I'm Russo and I do a little work here and there. It's about time for another episode of Research What? And this time I am talking about Smile Basic again. And in particular, I am talking about loading the definition files that are generated by the animation editor. So I've made this little program. It's largely an edit of Smileboom's ProNama project. This is the public key for that if you would like to check it out. And you could just copy the code from it, you know, whatever you want to do. But it starts the same way. It's heavily commented, looks sort of like this. I'm just going to start at the beginning and work my way through. Anyway, this is what the program looks like if you just start it from the menu. It does a little intro, and then you get a bunch of walking animations for a Blood Bowl mini set to some Creative Commons music. Here it goes. <laughs> It's interesting, to say the least, but let's look at the code. So at the top, we're just setting up the screen here. There's a variable for max sprites and a label in case you ever need to come back and change that. SP max is the maximum number of sprite assignments. And I probably don't need it to be so high, but what are you going to do? Moving on, the load function works the same way it usually does. Load def is what we're interested in here. It doesn't start for some lines though. Also animation gets started here. Load def is a custom function, and here it is defined at line 131. This is where the intro animation lives. The sound effects are in there too. At the end, the music gets subbed in. More on that later. ANM play is another custom function defined at line 290. After that, the sprites for the mini get loaded. Same definition though. The sprites are the same size and it saves some space. The next part has changed a little bit since Pronama. This animates all the copies of the Blood Bowl mini. It's different each time the program runs. A few of the variables go with ANM play. SP is the sprite number, AC stands for action cards, which are the animations that you set up in the editor, AC max is the maximum number of animations, and HX and HY are variables that get called by the ANM play function. And that's it for the front end. The next part keeps the minis all happy until you hit B or close the program some other way. And that leads us to SP def which I guess does or did have SBANM in it, which reads files for def info. This part defines the function load def to be followed by a string variable. This variable comes back into play a little bit later on. This defines ID to be some version of the string DEF colon, but it doesn't seem to be mentioned again. The two shift operators decide where exactly each element should be, and ID is our secret argument number one. This part sets several variables in relation to the contents of the definition files. It declares the number variable dwork as well. All of the variables that start with an H are in reference to the header, which in the end gets ignored. Max def is the maximum number of definitions, and all of these P variables are things that are either pushed or pulled, whatever the P stands for, from the actual file. Max PR is the area of the def file, and it's calculated using the width and height which are a couple of those P variables. Dwork is the def file's total working size. This is where a bit of the magic happens. The file size is noted with and without the header. The header is what makes this so difficult. DSZ is the total def file size minus the header, and W size is the size with the header. Here, the dat file input earlier is being loaded into the W array. Then, the work is replaced with the post header info from the W array. Top is where the header ends, so the information that's copied can start there. This bit does the final assigning of the variables required for spdef. Three of the existing variables get condensed into a binary number. That is the A, which stands for arguments. And you can see all of those if you tap the question mark after typing spdef. And that's basically the end of loading def files. But I'll keep going. There's a few other things that I've done that, you know, might be interesting. So here is ANM test, which is the animation tool's output. This is what you get when you test an animation in the editor. It's not as nice as load def, but works. Basically, in the editor, when you tap test animation, it will load something that looks exactly like this, and you'll just save it out from there. After that, you can copy it into your file, or you can load it remotely. That's why I said common def earlier. You can call this from another program. But yeah, that's what that looks like. There's a version of that in Pronama. So, you know, whichever one you want to use. 
And that's basically everything. This is the first third or so of Flight of the Bumblebee by Rimsy Korsakoff. Now that's a lot of notes. I might do the rest later, but, you know, tons of notes. And if you want to do that, this is the public key to the MML editor that I used to sequence that. And for what I'm sure is a limited time only, if you would like to download this version and look at exactly what it is that I've done, you can use this public key and download that. Like I said, if it's been a long time, it might not still be around. I don't know if I'm willing to be a gold customer yet. Anyway, that's all I've got for this time, so I will see myself out. Until next time, you have been watching Research What on Russo Works, and I'm Russo. Out.